when you go through the greatest hits of Republican grievances, you consistently find one chart topper. The IRS targeting Republicans back in 2013. It's their free bird. Now with the Republican House majority passing bills to defund the IRS and announcing a committee to investigate the weaponization of government, well, I'm getting ready to hear a whole bunch of throwback Thursdays to that 2012 song. Brace yourself for both parties stressing everyone out with a whole 23 hour cycle of half truths in the news. Of course that laugh sour is dedicated to advertising anti-anxiety medication. Now I'm making this video today because I suspect that you're about to start hearing a whole lot about this event in the coming days. So I want to make sure we're all starting off on the same page. Like so many issues nowadays, this one comes down to a debate between incompetency and malicious intent. Now for the sake of today's story, I'm going to simplify IRS tax systems a little bit. You got two tiers of nonprofit organizations. Your political nonprofits, this is where you don't want to be at. You got to pay income taxes and you got to reveal the name of your donors. Boo! And then you have your actually helping people and engaging in social welfare nonprofits. Ah, yes, this, this is the place you want to be. You don't have to pay income taxes and you can take anonymous donations. Now between the years of 2010 and 2012, a whole bunch of new nonprofits were starting up and they were all applying for the more desirable social welfare, as opposed to political, nonprofit status. So all right, taking a step back, you're an intern at the IRS and the boss man walks into your office, dumps a few thousand applications on your desk and says, hey, figure it out. Are these guys primarily political or are they primarily social welfare? They're all applying for social welfare and I need an answer by tomorrow. Now you could go through every application, reading every single one and evaluating whether that person is political or focused on social welfare. Or you could just start running random keyword searches for politicized words that you came up with and sort of see what shakes out of that method. Now, I think you can guess which method the IRS chose. Yes, the IRS got right down to business thinking up political terms and searching them through a database. I mean, come on, you're not even going to take the time to read every applicant's name. We're just searching through the names here. Now this of course included your classic conservative terms like Tea Party, Patriot, or 912. And also your more classic progressive terms like progressive, original there, occupy, and green energy. Now if your organization came up in one of these database searches, well in that case you'd be flagged and forced to take further action to justify why you were in fact not a political organization, but rather primarily focused on social welfare. Sorry to all you patriotic or green energy groups whose primary purpose was social welfare. Here are an additional five hoops that you get to jump through because you picked the wrong sort of name for your organization. So that's the system that launched a million tweets. From this point onward, the answers get a little less definitive because one side will conveniently forget that the liberal terms were showing up on this list, while the other side will conveniently forget that this ever happened. Writing off this terribly taped together filter system as a totally acceptable way to be doing business back in 2012. Now, there are a few more things to think about before you sort of jump to a conclusion on what actually happened and how ethical it was. First, you need to take a more nuanced version of the conservative argument than it was specifically targeting only conservative keywords. You see, the IRS back in 2011 and 2012 was receiving significantly more applications than the periods before that. This was because this period coincided with the rise of the Tea Party. More conservative groups were applying for social welfare tax status than ever before. Now, put it a different way, if you consistently had 10 Canadians immigrating to your country every year, and then suddenly 15 Mexicans tried to enter and the government started adding additional steps for all the immigrants, 
Well, that would not be a great look, even if you could legitimately say you were putting in those new steps because a whole 25 entrants for that year meant an additional strand on the entire immigration system. It certainly raised questions about whether you were targeting the Mexicans or not. Now, in this case, we were suddenly slapping a whole new filtering system on the existing ones. Uh, because this new swelling of conservative applicants was starting to really put some pressure on the whole system. Of course, this additional filter, because of the majority conservative applicants now, was going to have an adverse political impact specifically on those groups in a way it wouldn't have had in previous years. Now instead, conservatives argue that the IRS never should have added this additional filter, and instead they should have simply retained the old system of case-by-case -case reviews. Now sure, that requires a lot more manpower, especially with this large increase in applications, but here's a whole bunch of new money so that you can hire all the staff that you're going to need to review this new deluge of applications. Oh, just one sec. We want to cut their budget? Well, they'll figure it out. Now, the second thing to consider in this whole conversation is an FBI investigation that was run by James Comey. Now, that investigation concluded finding that investigators probing the IRS actions did not uncover the type of political bias or enemy hunting that would constitute a criminal violation. Instead, the evidence largely showed a mismanaged agency enforcing rules it did not truthfully understand on the applications for tax exemptions. So first, I mean, talk about biting the hand that feeds you, that's the IRS where we make our money to pay you. But more importantly, that investigation wasn't exactly a ringing endorsement of this filtration system, but it leaned on the side of incompetence versus a weaponized IRS. Now, upon request, Trump did decline to reopen that investigation in 2017. Now, the last piece of this puzzle happened with the combined cases of Lynchpins of Liberty v. United States and NorCal Tea Party Patriots v. United States. And oof, your name had both Patriots and Tea Party in it? You didn't stand a chance in that filter system. Now, it's a little hard to speak conclusively on these cases because then Attorney General Jeff Sessions settled everything out of court and didn't release specifics. Still, the unresolved complaint brought up some really interesting points about the legality of the IRS's program. Most importantly, something I haven't really touched on yet, the First Amendment. You see, it's not hard to make an argument that discriminating against organizations solely because they've picked political keywords in their name could violate free speech. If my company name is Generic LLC, well, under this system, the government's just gonna let me through. Get a little zesty with your name and slide in a term like Occupy or Tea Party, all of a sudden, more forms start showing up. Now, that could tamper down certain forms of protected speech. Now, I can't speak to the validity of this argument because, again, the case was settled at a court. But it was settled for what Jeff Sessions called a substantial amount of money, so clearly someone saw value in it. Now, in these cases, the real controversy revolved around the damages stemming from this program. You see, the government was arguing this entire lawsuit, it's, it's just a mute point at this point because the keyword search strategy that we were using was largely designed to deal with that influx of applications, and it's long since been phased out. You want to end that program? Congratulations, chief! It ended years ago! Drop this suit and let's move on. Mission accomplished. Now, the political named social groups, on the other hand, argued that they were entitled to more damages because of the expenses that they incurred justifying their status to the IRS. I had to hire someone to help me jump through all those hoops that you set up because of this arbitrary and secret standard about how political my company's name sounds to you guys. Pay me back. Again, settle at a court so we don't really know who won the debate. So overall, with all the evidence I've given you, that's the extent to what we currently know about the IRS targeting political named nonprofit organizations applying for socially responsible, as opposed to political, tax status. 
As I mentioned in the intro, this issue comes down to a debate between incompetence and malicious intent. And at the end of the day, I'm just curious to see if this new GOP-made committee investigating the weaponization of the United States government can deepen my comprehension of this event that happened back in 2012. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, remember to subscribe, ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.